Hi everyone, this is Kyle Sears from Zoll Medical. Today's Zoll X-Series tips and tricks video is going to focus on carbon monoxide monitoring through the finger probe on a Zoll X-Series. Everything we talk about today is contingent on your X-Series being equipped with the carbon monoxide feature. So if you're not sure whether or not your device has that, a good way to tell is right above this light bar, there's a little sticker that says Massimo Set Rainbow, and then it'll specifically say SPCO uh, at a minimum to determine whether or not you have that on your device. The other thing to look at is the SPO2, SPCO finger probe is specific and necessary for monitoring carbon monoxide. It'll come with this little hang tag, which is a sizing guide. So anytime you put a finger probe on, ideally you're gonna place it on the patient's non-dominant ring finger. On most people through the course of their life, that's gonna be the finger that has the least damage, the best perfusion, and the most capillaries intact which should yield the most accurate reading. From a sizing perspective, if you take the patient's non-dominant ring finger and you push it through this little hole in the sizing card and it goes past their nail bed on the other side, that means they should be using a smaller size finger probe, whether that be uh, a pediatric reusable probe or a pediatric neonate or infant uh, disposable probe as well. Once that finger probe gets placed on the patient's finger, within a few seconds, you're gonna see several different things pop up on the screen. You'll have a heart rate in the bottom left corner, assuming you don't have the leads hooked up to the patient. The bottom right corner is gonna provide an SpO2 value. That'll be the big number, that'll remain constant on the screen. You'll have your pleth wave, which corresponds with your SpO2 value. And then you'll see two numbers toggle back and forth. One will say PI, which is the perfusion index. And then SPCO. So your SPO2 is taking into account total blood gas saturation. What it doesn't do is tell you as a provider how much of that total blood gas saturation is comprised of things other than oxygenation. So in this case, by having SPCO, it's going to tell me that, yes, my SpO2 is 97%, my total blood gas saturation. But here specifically, I have a CO level of 1. My perfusion index, which we want to be 1 or higher, is telling me whether or not the finger probe I have on this patient is perfusing properly enough to legitimize the other values that I see on the screen. This is especially useful in situations where you don't have an obvious situation where there may be a CO poisoning or a CO exposure, especially in fire rehab situations. The concept of monitoring firefighters' carbon monoxide levels as they leave a structure fire is an NFPA standard and really should be compared to a baseline that is established outside of a fire situation. So in this case, SpO2 97, my CO is one, I'm good to go. Anywhere from zero to 9% is considered normal. If I set up your monitors and they had carbon monoxide on them, I always put an alarm to go off at 10%. So at 10%, you'll see a red light flash. There'll be a very loud alarm that goes off in the bottom right corner will flash red and white. That's the monitor saying, hey, this patient has a total blood gas saturation of whatever it is, but more specifically, 10% of that is comprised of carbon monoxide molecules. That's usually the point where st people start to feel a little bit nauseous, maybe they get dizzy, and obviously the higher that number goes, the worse off that patient is. You can acknowledge those alarms or cancel them by hitting the bell and the bell with the slash through button, but in this case, it's gonna put up a minute and 30 countdown and after a minute and 30, if that level is still 10% or higher, it's going to go off again. And again, that's the monitor saying, hey, this is not a good situation. This patient's probably not feeling very well. You need to do something about it. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of perspective on carbon monoxide monitoring. Uh, please let me know if you guys have any questions and hope you have a great day. Thanks so much.